We are all sinners in need of God's mercy, and our sins remain, neither forgiven, nor blotted out, nor paid for, unless we come to repentance, as we are commanded to do. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. If we'll obey, we'll enter his mercy, and our past sins will be forgiven and blotted out. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. That's right. Our sins remain, neither forgiven nor blotted out, unless we come to repentance. And we will perish without mercy. We will pay for those sins ourselves, unless we come to repentance. Jesus warned, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Peter makes it clear, come to repentance, or else perish. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus died for our sins. Our sins were not blotted out or paid for past, present, and future when he died. He made his death, his blood, available to cover our sins, past, present, and future. He made it possible for our sins to be covered who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Without the coverage he made available, we would all be hopelessly doomed to perish, repentant or not. Thank you, Jesus. We can have that mercy, that coverage, that grace, that redemption, as promised, if we'll obey and come to God on his terms, in repentance, confessing and forsaking sin. If we'll come to God in repentance, we will have remission of sins that are past. We will be purged of our old sins. The past sins that separated us from God will be blotted out and will be redeemed by Jesus' blood from the death penalty we had earned for those past sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. No longer separated from God and no longer under condemnation, we enter justification, made right with God. Those who obey and come to God in repentance enter the presence of the Lord. How? By the gift of the Holy Spirit, given to them that obey Him and repent. And we are His witnesses of these things, and so we are also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We will still sin, of course, after coming to God in repentance. We're human. Through the Holy Spirit and His Word, the Bible, Jesus helps us to overcome slavery to sin and leads us into His righteousness. This is how we are made ready to receive the gift of eternal life and to be the Father's sons and daughters forever. An ongoing relationship with Him yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. He that overcomes, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. To remain in justification, right with God and not under condemnation, we must continue to abide in Jesus, and we must continue to follow the lead He provides through the Holy Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. To follow the Holy Spirit, we must, of course, remain in repentance, having a heart and mind willing to change as we are led. While we remain in justification and repentance, Jesus continues to cover, by His blood, the penalty earned for new sins we commit. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. While we remain in justification and repentance, we have the hope of salvation, the promised gift of eternal life, to be received, by grace, at Jesus' revelation, his return. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, 
and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the promise he hath promised us, even eternal life. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When we receive eternal life at Jesus' return, we will be born again, having a new immortal spiritual body, as Jesus and Paul described in John 3, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 54, and Philippians 3, 20 and 21. Then we will have salvation. We will have eternal security, saved from ever perishing in death. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When we enter justification, receiving the Holy Spirit, we have been spiritually begotten of God. If we endure to the end, we will be born of God, or born again, at Jesus' return. Then we will no longer sin. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not, but he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and that wicked one touches him not. If we return to a life of willful sin, no longer in repentance, no longer abiding in Jesus, and no longer following the Holy Spirit, then Jesus' blood is not available to cover our new sins. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. If we revert to a life of willful sin, no longer in repentance, no longer abiding in Jesus, and no longer following the Holy Spirit, we fall away from justification. We return to condemnation, no longer in God's goodness or grace. What happens then? We forfeit that hope of salvation. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. On them which fell, severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. When saved, always saved? The presumption that anyone is already saved, done deal, is hazardous error. Short of receiving the gift of eternal life, we will surely perish, very much unsaved. In this mortal life, we may enter justification with God, while in justification we have that hope of salvation mentioned by the Apostle Paul. Note how Paul separates being in justification now from salvation later through him if we abide in him. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Paul had the Holy Spirit and he understood he could possibly return to a life of sin and therefore be rejected, a castaway even after preaching to others. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We can fall away from justification. We are warned to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Otherwise, we may forfeit our hope of salvation. We may miss that appointment to obtain salvation. Paul spoke of in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 8 and 9. Let us therefore fear, lest, a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. What about faith? Faith, trust that God exists and rewards, is necessary, because without it we could never see any reason or need to come to God on his terms in repentance. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It is the decision to obey and come to God on his terms that pleases God, and for which we receive his promised mercy. True believers, like Abraham, are those who act on their faith and obey God. Abraham was deemed a believer and was justified to God by his obedience, and not by faith only. We come to God's mercy and saving grace through faith, not just because we have faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Faith is given to us to call us. Question is, will we answer the call and come to God? Faith alone is not enough. We must come to God on his terms. For that we please him, 
and receive his promised mercy. Jesus said there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Otherwise, outside of repentance, we do not receive the promised mercy and will perish. That's why Jesus told his disciples to preach repentance and remission of sins, not faith alone. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem.